right, well, this is episode 26 of Talk That Talk. I'm your host, Fallon Stokes, and I have another special guest today. We have Westlake High School basketball coach, Hilda Hankerson. Welcome to the show, Coach Hank. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you. Your resume speaks for itself. Uh, You've been coaching at Westlake High School since 1997. Um, from Atlanta, I think. I'm, I'm going to let you talk about your journey a little bit. Okay. But former collegiate athlete, played at Mercer University, where you were a four-year starting point guard for Mercer. Mm-hmm. And after your career was done at Mercer, you pursued coaching. It was at Mississippi State for about four years, from about 1978 to 82. Right. So I know we're going to get into it, too, a bit of a gap between you coaching at Mississippi State and then coming to Westlake. But then as well, you know, since you've been at Westlake, you built a powerhouse uh, nationally ranked. Well, the national champions this year winning the Geico National National Championship, as well as four consecutive state championships in the state of Georgia. So that's just a little bit about your background and how great you've been. You've coached a lot of great athletes, as well as being the athletic director at Westlake. And that's produced some tremendous athletes professionally on the boys and girls side of sports and athletics. So I'm so happy to have you. Let's well, jump right in and just get started with it. All right. Well, I'm ready. <laughs> so just talk a little bit about, I know you play basketball at Mercer, but give us a little bit of your story. You're from Atlanta or grew up in Atlanta and playing high school basketball here and wanted to be a college athlete. Talk about that experience and your development. Yeah, well, I grew up here in Atlanta, but um, my father, was in the Air Force. So I got a chance to travel around a good little bit. And this is where he retired Okay, in the metro Atlanta area. This is where my mother and father are from. They're from Fairburn, Georgia, to be okay. absolutely correct. Uh-huh. And uh, so we came back here and this is where uh, my high school was spent in the metro area. Okay. Okay. Um, we actually um, got a chance to go to Mercer right out of uh, high school at St. Joseph High School. It doesn't exist anymore. You're so young, you don't even know about that. (laughs) It was in in downtown Atlanta. Okay. Part of downtown. Okay. It was uh, built sort of across the street from the Hilton Hotel on Cortland Street. I know exactly what you're talking about. And um, that's where I played my high school days. Okay. uh, Was blessed to be given the opportunity to play at uh, Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. My high school's, uh, my high school coach, I had a husband who was a really good friend of the coach at Mercer. They were in the Red Cross together and had done a lot of things with the uh, first aid, swimming and things of that nature. And they have a conversation and the rest is history. (laughs) And that's where I ended up. Oh, that's fantastic. I tell people all the time, it's not always what you know. It could be who you know. And that opportunity can open a door that's wide open to a great opportunity. Yeah, um, and they were doing really well at that time. Mercer had just come off of uh, coming from the Final Four mm-hmm. uh, that year. Okay. And I said, mm, that's the place I'm going right there. <laughs> you know, uh, I got a chance to watch them play, uh-huh. visited the campus, leave no doubt. Right. I went to the school that <laughs> had been very successful uh, right before I had an opportunity to go. So uh, I was proud to be a part of such a great program. Yeah. And that, that program does have a lot of great history. I know being a school in Macon, you don't hear about them as much, but I know there's so many great stories from just other athletes or players that played with you back then and even after you. So, you know, if you get to Mercer, talk about that experience, because I know during your time, you guys made it to the Sweet 16 and the WNIT, some other great accomplishments as well. But just talk about that experience on the collegiate level and the the amount of success your team had while you were there. Well, like I said, the team was very successful prior to me arriving. Uh And um, we were blessed to be given the opportunity to still continue that success. The first Olympian actually was a young lady that I played with named Cindy Brogdon. She was the first Olympian in the state of Georgia. Wow. And um, we would have played against each other in high school but our team lost right before the next round to play her. Uh-huh. But the, the miracle of the story is we do get a chance to become teammates uh-huh. and the best of friends. Mm-hmm. And she represented the United States 
uh, on the Olympic team and being the first Olympian from the state of Georgia. And she's in the Hall of Fame today. Yeah. And uh, so proud to be given the opportunity to play with such an outstanding athlete. She was um, one of the best of the best. And like I said, we didn't get that opportunity in high school, but it was sure grand playing with her at Mercer University. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bet it was. Um, you know, what a what an accomplishment and what a journey. So when you finish at Mercer, you decide to go into coaching. Now, I know with the times, this being, you know, in the 70s, yeah. you know, were there opportunities to go play professionally overseas for you? Or was it just your whole mindset you wanted to become a coach? Well, in the beginning, I wasn't thinking along that line of coaching. But as I got to the end of that journey, about to get that diploma, I said, mm, what am I going to do? <laughs> so uh, I decided to put in some applications to become a graduate assistant. Okay. And when I put those applications in, you know, I got some some hits. People, you know, had given me the opportunity and they said, you know, said yes. But my coach that I had gone to Mercer to play for, Peggy Collins, she had moved on by my senior year to okay. Mississippi State University. Okay. Um, they saw women's basketball taking that turn and we were getting ready to become a part of the NCAA. Okay. And uh, see, now I'm really telling my age, you don't even know about that. <laughs> uh, so when we were gonna become a part of the NCAA, they asked her to coach the team at Mercer, I mean, Mississippi State University. Okay. And while I was in my senior year, Mississippi State comes to play Mercer. Mm-hmm at Mercer and uh, well, we beat them, you know. <laughs> and so I actually go to the locker room and uh -huh. stand outside of her door and wait until she's finished talking to her team because I know she has some things to say since they lost, you know. Right. And uh, so I waited and she talked to me, you know, we were always really tight. Uh -huh. And she said, well, what's your plans after college? What are you, what are you planning on doing? I said, well, I want to become a graduate assistant. I want to uh -huh. coach. And the next thing she said was, come work for me awesome. immediately. Awesome. She says, come work for me. And so I go to Mississippi State. So people say, you know, like I just followed her. Uh -huh. I go to Mississippi State and work there, get my master's degree. Uh -huh. And after that, she asked me to become her full time coach. Oh. And for, you know, coaches not to teach mm -hmm. in those days, that was huge for women. Right. You know, because a lot of the women still had to teach. And so I didn't have to teach on the college level and neither did my head coach. Right. So that, that was really a big change that she saw uh, the women's basketball program starting to merge into a different era. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was proud to be a part of that start. Yeah. You know, the new generation of when the girls and the boys teams merged under the NCAA. I can remember seeing that logo when they created that girl's face mm -hmm. on the top of that guy's face, it was a proud moment, you know, uh -huh. for you all, it's just a logo. For right. Me, I remember the first day and, and I remember them bringing the copy of it into the office, uh -huh. you know, and how powerful that was to see yeah. that the girls are now going to be recognized in a different light. Right. Right. Big yeah. move in the women's movement. Oh yeah. Um, it was huge. Huge. So, like being in Starksville, Mississippi uh, for four years and, you know, I know that's an adjustment coming from Atlanta, um, Ooh, yes. but at the same time, coaching in the SEC. So yeah. when you were upgraded or promoted to an assistant coach and you were head of recruiting for them and a point guards coach specifically, yeah. talk about how competitive it was during that time to recruit and especially in the SEC as women's basketball is starting to really develop. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, you know, we weren't blessed with the, the social media to, to go look at athletes. You know, it's, it's, it was physical hard work of either driving or flying to uh -huh. the big city uh -huh. in order to recruit and reading a lot of newspapers. Right. And if, if you had people that actually wrote about the girls' teams, because some areas didn't even write about the girls' game. They put the boys' score in the paper and not the girls'. Right. And uh, so that was uh, a journey in itself. The recruiting process was, right. was powerful. Some notable people that I actually recruited uh -huh. Teresa Edwards Ooh. in Cairo, Georgia. Uh -huh. Cairo. And uh, I remember going back and telling the head coach, I said, You got to come and see her play. 
I said, this kid is good. You don't want her to leave the state. You oh, want her to leave the state. No, you want her to, but she didn't. That's what yeah, I said. Right, right. Okay. And I, I figured she wouldn't. And uh, the funny part about it is that one of my old teammates that I co that I played with at St. Joseph High School, father was from the University of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And they moved to Cairo. And okay. we just hooked up about two years ago. Mm -hmm. and she told me that her dad, because he was a grad from Georgia, he said he was very instrumental in helping get her over there. I there said, he was. Thank you. Thank you so much. That helped. That helped. I but got yeah, you. She was one outstanding athlete. Right. But I, I had heard about her. You know, my husband was from Macon, Georgia at that time. So, you know, I was able to get a hold of some of the papers that were from South Georgia. Mm -hmm. I heard about this kid called Teresa mm -hmm. Edwards. And, you know, right now, she still holds the record of going to five Olympics. And and I tell I tell my kids all the time, I didn't misjudge her. I have not misjudged you. <laughs> I saw the greatness in that kid at a very young age. Very young age. <laughs> and, you, know, that's, you have a great eye. You have a great eye for talent. Yeah, so um, beautiful. So after you leave Mississippi State, it, it, like I said, it was a period where I don't see a record of you coaching anywhere. So yeah. what did you do during that time span between well, time leaving there and going to Westlake? Well, I go to um, Miami. Okay. We got stationed uh, in Miami, Florida. Okay. And uh, I actually had the opportunity to coach at uh, two private schools, Sailor Tabernacle okay. for one year and Trinity Christian Academy for one year. Okay. And after that, I went to Sunset High School for about six years, I think about six years at Sunset. Those years are running together now. <laughs> trying to remember. Uh, but Sunset... Uh, for about six years. That was the public school when I finally got attached to them. Okay. Okay. So let's just jump to 1997 because I know this is a, a time, especially in Atlanta or Georgia, mm -hmm. basketball was popping. I, I know I was playing. I was in high school. For sure. It was competitive. So yeah. you get the job at Westlake in 97. And, you know, I can't remember. I was young and the state of the program before you got there, but I know what it was when you did. I mean, before you got there, but I know what it turned into when you did. <laughs> Y'all were competitive. A lot of your players I either played against or played with in AAU in the summertime. Right, right. But just talk about getting that job and understanding, I guess, like the environment you had and just the community of athletes you had in South Fulton during that yeah. time. <laughs> you know, that was coming in your school regardless and, and yeah. what it was, but just that time when you started. Well, I first was at uh, Camp Creek Middle School when I first arrived, okay. and I was asked to be the assistant coach at Westlake. Okay. And there were three young ladies on the team that were sophomores. Okay. And I looked at the head coach. I said, well, what was your record last year? He said, well, we won three games. I mm -hmm. said, mm, okay. <laughs> I said, well, based on what I see, I said, possibly in three years, mm -hmm. this team can compete for a championship. Mm -hmm. And in three years, we go to the Final Four. Mm. And those three girls were an instru instrumental part of taking us there. Right. And uh, and the rest is history. We have been blessed to have had, like you said, from the South Fulton area, uh, some outstanding athletes mm -hmm. in this community. Mm -hmm. And the Westlake program since the 1996, 97 team, uh, we haven't had under 20 win seasons. We <laughs> averaged over 20 wins. One season we hit uh, 18. Okay. But we were 18 and 10, still went to the state playoffs. Right. It's still a good record. Yeah. We yeah, went to the state playoff. But in some years, you know, we averaged 26 wins, 27. So just to put it mildly, we've averaged over 20 wins almost every year. And except for that one year when we hit 18, uh -huh. that team went to the state. Every team has been in the state playoffs in one category or the other. Final Four, Sweet 16, right. Sweet 8, or just being a part of the top that went. And those are the teams that the kids still hang their hat on. Right. Uh, the program itself has been so successful that it, it seemed like it happened so fast. Mm -hmm. And it almost passed me by. I had a one of my athletes told me one time in summer league, she said, coach, you know, we're undefeated in summer league. <laughs> and I said, oh, my God. Mm -mm. No, I, di I didn't know that. I hadn't realized that. She said, coach. And this was a time when 
the summer league was played like a tournament. Uh -huh. And you stay in the one location over there, uh, Indicator, uh -huh. you ran that league over there. And you stayed over there the whole summer. Mm. We played for a championship. Mm -hmm. We played for the championship and we're undefeated. That team goes to the final four. Mm. And I'm just coaching and, and trying to get the girls right. And my, my starting point guard, she stops me and she says, you know, we're undefeated, coach. <laughs> like, why are you coaching so hard? I, I know. You know, it's a player that's going to remind you, too. <laughs> I said, mm, wow. I said, you know, you're right. Thank uh -huh. you. And, you know, and I was just doing what I do. Right. I just coach the team and try to be as fundamentally sound with the girls to make sure that they're getting those basic skills that could possibly help them on the next level and mm -hmm. not just or playing, you know, at the Westlake High School. Right. So it was, you know, powerful to see what they did through those years and those teams that won. You know, we eventually win, you know, four straight championships. Mm -hmm. But uh, I told the kids, you know, we had some, one of the parents had created some T-shirts that said one team, one dream. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> there were, it was one dream, but many teams. Yeah, Everybody had the same dream, but that was the those were the teams. Those four teams were the ones that actually, you know, were were, were the most successful. Right, but right. The beauty, of the beauty of that is to watch some of those other girls come back, mm -hmm. and they come in the locker room and share their stories and mm -hmm. their sense of pride of watching them accomplish that. Because they, you know, they pull out their old Letterman jackets and T-shirts that they could find. And I'm like, y'all still have that? You know, I go, yeah, Cole. Yeah, you keep it. I mean, it was it was powerful. Mm -hmm. Watch them come back and act like they were still playing. Right. And it meant that much to the community. Right. To do that. Well, that's one thing I, I've always liked about, you know, Westlake is that even my friends who play sports there, they always come back. It, it's yeah. it's yeah. whether it's homecoming, going to see a game to support, they support and come back. They're great alumni. And that's important when you're building great programs. You see sure. your old heads come back to talk to the young kids and yeah. just express the same things that they're currently going through that they've seen it or we've seen it before. So that's always a great asset to have as a coach. But, you know, you said it, you know, during your time at Westlake, I mean, your resume, you've been to five Final Fours, um, five Elite Eights, four Sweet Sixteens, um, eight state playoffs, regional championships, over 650 wins. It's, it's insane. It's, it's really incredible. But what can you say? How have you been able to handle or have this amount of success for so long, especially dealing with this Generation Z? Let me know. Generation Z, what we have now with these young kids. We spoke a little bit about it over the phone before a couple of weeks ago, but how are you still able to adapt and be successful with this generation? Well, you know, it's being willing to evolve. Mm -hmm. And just like the game has changed as well. Right. You know, uh, various types of offenses, playing everybody five out, four out, one in, all of that. You've got to be willing to change. Mm -hmm. and not think that one thing that you do will make the, every team great. Right. Uh, I went to a lot of coaching clinics in my day. So I'm going to really tell my age. I've been, been to the clinics with the great John Wooten, okay, from UCLA. Oh, nice. I've, I've been to many <laughs> clinics with him. Uh, okay. And, oh, my goodness, that information is just priceless. I'm so proud to say that I was able to see him when he was still on that circuit and was willing to right. share all that wisdom. And one of the first things I learned as a young coach, don't be afraid to change. Mm. And, and some coaches get things locked in one way. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And every team can't run the same offenses or the same defenses. God knows we were able to play certain presses. The next year come around, that team looked like they'd never seen it before. Because <laughs> they don't have the same right. character of of athletes right and i have to analyze that real quick you know mm -hmm. i was blessed to coach a six five center mm. uh and she came to me with no talent no nothing she didn't even understand why why some points are one and some points are two and some are three. <laughs> she what was makes raw. It real raw 
Uh-huh. Didn't have a clue of the game, but she came to the gym. I worked with her one on one over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And she came to see me her ninth grade year. And she said, they say I should play this game. I said, mm. I stood up because I still couldn't believe how tall she was. I was sitting at the table uh-huh. at the freshman registration and I'm looking at her going, I said, they're right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the rest is history. In in a couple of years, this kid was named the most improved player mm. by the Atlanta General Constitution in our conference, in our league mm-hmm. as far as. Mm-hmm. Uh, 7A basketball mm-hmm. and she worked extremely hard and I had to work hard with her because when when I'm in the gym working one-on-one with her yeah I'm the guard for outlet anybody else in the gym you know so <laughs> I said you know I, I got to get a water break you know too many passes to me and teaching her how to shoot how to run how to do every facet of the game mm-hmm. I'm so proud to say that those are the kind of things that you got to be willing to do Mm-hmm. And, and you know, and some people don't want to teach, especially a girl that don't know the ball, don't know the ball game. Right. Some people don't want to teach that. They mm-hmm. want kids that already come in there with some talent. Mm-hmm. And I learned early in my career, you got to be willing to teach. My first high school game that I coached when I came out of college, I almost retired that night. <laughs> <laughs> we lost game 42 to two, two, two. And wow. I went back and it was a private school. I went back, told the pastor, you're gonna have to change some of those games off their schedule. This is not gonna work, Pastor. That's just too many. And uh we played that same team in January, you know, because they were in our region, so we gotta uh-huh. play them again. So in January, we play them again, and we lose by four. Wow. And uh he said, Well, where'd you get the extra players? I said, It's the same team. Wow, it just got better. Mm-hmm. And that is what I will hang my hat on right there. Mm-hmm. You gotta be willing to coach them. Right. Teach them. Right. Get what you can get out of what you have. Cause wishing for somebody else is not gonna happen. No. They're gonna be the same ones <laughs> from October <laughs> to January and February. That's the same bunch of kids. Right. You gotta get them to buy in. Mm. And when they buy into the system, you can be successful. And sometimes being successful is not always a win. When we lost by four, and mm-hmm. we went and celebrated. We had a pizza party and everything. Because it's better to lose by four than right. to beat and, and you only make two points. Right. And we made the first bucket. I said, okay, yeah, you're on our way. That was the last bucket I saw that night. <laughs> I could have gave up then. <laughs> no, but that's good as you did. Um, kids needed you. And, and, and that is something like... I say with this generation, it's about everything coming easy and no one wanting to really work for anything anymore. But when you do have the kids that you can really connect with them and they connect with you and you're able to, they, they're grasping on everything you're feeding them and and really reading into it and buying into the program. That's a coach's dream. That's something that a coach will work with you. I always used to say when coaches used to yell at me, you know, sometimes like, why are you always yelling? And then they always would say, well, when I stop, that's when you should be concerned because I'm mm-hmm. not trying to help or work with you anymore. Mm-hmm. But those and, are- and every kid is different. You know, mm-hmm. they uh, I had one little girl. I would in- give her the instructions on how to shoot a free throw. Uh-huh. And I was always yelling at, you know, line it up, hand in the basket. Da, 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 da. And, you know, and after a while, by the time she became a senior, you know, she pretty much was making those free throws. So uh-huh. I stopped saying it. Uh-huh. And one night she took the ball. She did a little dribble. She put it under her arm. She looked across the gym. She says, why aren't you talking to me? I said, ooh, mm, okay. And you never know how powerful that is to right. a child. You know, that was right. young in my career. I said, okay. I'll keep I talking. Said, I said, I'm going to keep talking to you, even though I thought you had it. And she did. Uh-huh. But she still wanted, that was part of her routine. My voice was part of her routine. Mm. And, mm-hmm. uh, and she was just as precious as she wanted to be. Right. And was one of the first girls to uh, really play four years for me at Sunset High School. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Coach, you, you know, during your tenure, you were the AD athletic director at Westlake from about 2001 to 2011. And like I said before, so many great athletes have come through Westlake. 
Um, you know, I'll just name a, a couple, you know, Cam Newton, Heisman Trophy winner, as well as mm-hmm. NFL MVP back in 2015. Right. Um, and currently you're losing your player, Raven Johnson, and so mm-hmm. many others. But just talk about when you were af- the athletic director and then still being the basketball coach. How do you balance so much great talent? and egos and able to still get these kids to understand, to remain humble, to work hard and the importance of just getting better, you know, to move on to the next level. How do you manage that? Well, what we, like you said, we've been blessed to have some of the greatest athletes. Uh, Just speaking on the football program, besides Cam Newton, uh, Coach Dallas Allen, our head coach during that time, Mm -hmm. actually was honored by USA Today to have the most active pro football players in the nation. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, and that was just, that was huge. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, uh, we never did get that championship. Mm. We, no doubt, we were still one of the most sought after programs of getting some of the best talents in the country. Right. Uh, and this is what I tell people all the time. Sometimes you don't get that championship, mm-hmm. but it still cannot take away from how great that football program has been in mm-hmm. Westlake history. Mm-hmm. You know, our, our track team has been stellar. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they have a total of seven championships with uh, the boys and the girls track team together. Mm-hmm. I, I kid with Coach Rogers all the time. I said, we don't put ours together. We put ours together. We got seven too, you know. Right. Coach <laughs> <laughs> Rogers, he's been there a long time too. Right, right, oh, right. Mm-hmm. We, we actually came into Westlake at the same time from Camp Creek Middle School. Wow. And uh, have been pretty much the only coach that Westlake knows. We are the the original coaches in the building. There has been nobody else that has been a coach in the building as long as we have. That's awesome. You know, and because of the the greatness in not just in basketball, but in in football, uh, track, uh, we've even been blessed one year when I was AD, every team went to the state playoff except for one sport. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, except for one sport. And, and that's when we were really getting it. You know, we even uh-huh. have, a pro, we have a pro tennis player right now. Mm, uh, yeah. He went to Georgia Tech. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you may. Yeah. 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 I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, he, you know, he was a big old guy. Uh, tall and lean. Yeah. Yeah. And Coach Rogers used to always get about, you know, come on, you play some basketball too now, come on. And he really could. He really could play basketball. You know, Uh everybody wants to get in the gym and throw the ball or two. And Uh he really could play some basketball. Okay. And uh, But we were just blessed. We've been blessed with this area, this community, the 30331 zip code. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is where it is. (laughs) That's what what I say. (laughs) Uh, Oh, man. We've been blessed with a lot of great talent Mm -hmm. to come out of this area. Mm. Um, you know, in some of the, the rec league and the AAU programs that these kids have been a part of, you know, is what has made South Fulton uh, a place to go. I've had parents to contact me mm-hmm. from out of state. <laughs> Coach Rogers has had people come in and say, I'll, I'll be moving to uh, Atlanta next year. I'm getting ready to find my home. I just want to come in and watch your team practice because we're coming to your neighborhood. Wow. One of the young girls came out of Cincinnati and uh, I said, did you know about us? She called off my record, what we had done. And I said, mm. yeah. she says, I've done my research. Wow. And that's what's impressive. When people mm-hmm. outside of the state of Georgia come to Georgia, mm-hmm. and, you, know, you better believe anybody going over there recruiting about out of Cincinnati. <laughs> Coach Rogers wow. had somebody from Las Vegas. Come on. Wow. <laughs> people do their homework about uh-huh. the Westlake program. And and mm-hmm. that's just that's just real. You know, so we've, no. we've been blessed to have great athletes. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. So let's talk about this last year. Again, congratulations on another state championship, national championship, Geico national champions this year too. But just talk about the experience with that team you had and you know having the likes of Raven Johnson and others, you know, she'd been there for four years with you. Yeah. Um, she, she won four state championships. I mean, she hadn't lost. So I know going off to South Carolina, she still has those high expectations. But just yeah. talk about the experience this year and how special this group was. Well, first of all, uh, 
it was an outstanding opportunity for us to get an opportunity to play in the Geico Nationals. Mm -hmm. We were actually, we, we played in the national tournament Ravens freshman year. Okay. And, uh, and we didn't, we didn't win. We lost the first game and, uh, we did not get invited her sophomore year, but that team went undefeated. That team didn't have any seniors on it. Right. And that team to win a state championship. We were like, Oh, oops. <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, slip one right in with that young girl. Right. You know, when, you, when you have seniors, you know, they got that that drive that right. that's different from everybody else. And yeah. uh, for that for team that, to win it, we yeah, were like, the sophomores, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Sophomores and juniors. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. And Raven was a sophomore. Your point guard is a sophomore now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't have any seniors around her that's guiding her. Right. And uh, so after we did that, the next year, we actually get an invitation to the Geico in Raven's junior year. Okay. But we got the invitation on that that night that we won, on that Saturday night. Went to school on Monday. Mm -hmm. The world closed down on Tuesday. And we didn't, <laughs> we didn't get it. The world closed down on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that was a pandemic. COVID-19. Yeah, COVID-19. Yeah. We, we were so locked out of that thing so fast. That we need to get a team picture, you know. <laughs> we only have the state championship picture that we did on the floor That's of the it. Coliseum. That's the only wow. picture that we have because uh, we didn't get a chance to ever come back together mm. to, to make that picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that would have been our second opportunity to go to Geico. Okay. Okay. And so, and then this year, when we got started, you know, because of the pandemic, we had different rules and guidelines, mm -hmm. you know, to wear the mask on the sideline. And uh, I heard one of one of the people who was speaking about our team one day and they wrote an article and they said, you know, Westlake is doing well this year. And he made a comment. He said, I think the only thing that can beat Westlake is COVID. I almost fainted. I said, my God, he's so right because I mm -hmm. have no control over COVID. Mm -hmm. And we, we tighten that thing up. <laughs> we were already taking the temperatures and, you know, wearing our masks. But I went and bought those N95. They said that was the best of the best. Right, right. The N95, on, <laughs> we wore it all day in practice. It did not come down. It did not come down. And if you had to bring it down because you couldn't catch your breath. Right. You had the safe zones. Pull up, step over to the side. Wow, they were practicing with that mask. Wow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the girls, it, it made us better, you know. It really made yeah, us if, you can, if you can play with a mask on, the games are going to be a breeze. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we wore that mask every single day. Okay. And I got the parents buy-in, the kids buy-in to work hard to stay safe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't be going out there and, and doing what other friends are doing. Right. It had to be a concerted effort. It yeah. Did. And I said, because nobody wants to be the one that we say, mm, because of you, right. you could not play. That's accountability right there. Yeah. No, it wasn't yeah. that one. No, no. <laughs> but, you know, we had our little scare early. Uh huh. When, you know, things happened. And I mean, you uh, just can't, you know, it was just too unpredictable. Yeah, Even yeah, but, you taking all the precautions is still so unpredictable. Yeah. But the girls bought in, the parents bought in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was unbelievable with that journey. And I knew that that team had something special and people kept talking about what, what if, what if you get the invitation? And, you know, we knew that if we could hold on mm -hmm. and win the championship, we could possibly get an invitation to Geico. Mm -hmm. um, that time we were kind of expecting it if we could win the state. Okay. The first time we got the invitation, it was like, what? You said what? Who? <laughs> you had the right school? You know, it was total shock, total shock. Really? Okay. Oh my gosh, we were just about to faint, and you know, we had played thirty games. Mm -hmm. You know, this year we didn't play as many games, right? Uh, because of you know COVID oh. and everything. So the roster, the 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 actual schedule was not as many. We actually played a total of twenty two games. Mm. But if you play all of them, you play thirty three, mm. and with Geico, maybe thirty four, thirty five. Mm -hmm. you know, we weren't nearly as exhausted. I think <laughs> even though COVID was something that we had to be mindful of, I think not playing as many games was an asset. Right. Down the stretch. 
Right. We were exhausted that first year. I mean, that's a lot of games. That's a lot of games. Awesome at least, yeah. it all you had. Mm -hmm. But when we were given the opportunity to go this year, you know, the girls had the mindset. I had, I got two girls, Raven and Brianna Turnage. Those mm -hmm. are the only two that would get four rings. Oh, and wow. uh, and people, they would always say, well, how many girls do you have coming back? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's only, it was only two of them. <laughs> the rest of them have graduated. You know, these are these are new babies. Yeah, yeah. And that was the part that was so outstanding because Raven and Brianna and Raven started that her first Geico Championship. Okay. But, um, Brianna, Brianna didn't even come off the bench, but mm -hmm. a couple of seconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so she didn't have that experience, but they knew that they wanted to win it this time. Right. You know, the last right. time we came in, okay, we see what it's about. <laughs> right. But you got to have some experience. Right. And um, and we really wanted to do our best. Yeah. And, and and to have that opportunity on the biggest stage, even though a lot of our fans weren't able to come uh, to Florida. We actually had it in Florida and not New York because New York was still slowly open. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. It wasn't really open like Florida places. And Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> so so we ended up having to go to Florida. I said, I don't care where it is. Uh, and it was nationally televised. I watched it. So I know really? it was people people who had kids that attended Westlake. My uh one of my good friends' mother, she doesn't even watch basketball. And she <laughs> called me, Westlake's on national TV. And I was like, Oh, the game's on? Let me watch it. But I mean, you had everybody's attention and you've had it for at least the last four years with this run your teams have been able to make. And it's been outstanding, and to say the least. So, you know, I know it's a big deal. I know you're a big Don Staley fan. Um, but talk about when Raven made a decision to choose South Carolina and you got to co talk to Coach Staley about your player and her coming there. What was that? What was that like, that experience? Well, you know, it was really uh something that is doesn't get a chance to happen a lot right especially when you have someone as great as Don Staley you know she's an, a U.S. Olympian mm -hmm. and uh you know actually has been a part a great part of changing that culture she is the one that changed that culture over there at South Carolina she did uh, and you know brought them from nothing to greatness right but so she's done so much for them and uh one night when she came over to watch the game, to watch Raven play, mm -hmm. uh, she came into my office and I had a picture of mm -hmm. her on the USA team. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I know you're coming to recruit Raven, but I need your signature on my picture. Yeah. <laughs> so I, got, I got her to sign. <laughs> See, it wasn't about Raven then. I had to get the signature of one of the greatest ball players of all time. Oh, and one of the greatest coaches. You know? Right, right. For, for her... To, to get Raven, uh, one of the best guards in the United States of America. One of the best players. Be, yeah, <laughs> and to be named the Naismith Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. You know, Raven is not only the greatest girls basketball player, she is the greatest athlete in Westlake history. Mm. She is the most honored mm. athlete in the Westlake history. Boy or girl. Mm. So let's get that out there. Right. You know, and... Uh, you know, coaches, we don't get a chance to coach that type of athlete all the time. Mm -hmm. And when she comes around, you know, you better take a hold of it and grab it and, and realize how great she is. Mm -hmm. you know, when she got her first ring, she told the guy, he said, we we're measuring our fingers for the second ring. And she tells him, oh, he said, well, what finger do you want to put it on? She says, pick one because I'm winning four. Oh. Confidence. I said, I looked at her, I said, mm, I'm gonna believe with her. That's my baby. Right there. That's, you know. that's a point guard, you know, to have that to have a great player as a point guard, it speaks, I know it speaks volumes as a coach yeah. because right. she's her voice on the floor. And oh, you, gosh, know, yeah. you have somebody you can trust and knows that they're gonna run your game plan to perfection and you can trust that they're gonna make the right decisions. That's special because most teams don't have that. You yeah, know, and that's the position that's probably the hardest to feel. I know centers, you know, you can't, you know, you can't grow no babies. Uh, but that that mind, 
mm -hmm. of that guard is so powerful. It is. And, uh, and I'm just blessed to have had the opportunity to coach her and uh, looking forward to watch her play at the next level. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they asked us to send her uh, jersey. It's going to mm -hmm. sit in the ring of honor mm -hmm. at the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Oh, that's one year. Awesome. And uh, so, you know, I got to make plans to go to Knoxville to see that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, and I, I should have already gone by now, but now I really have a great reason to go because, <laughs> uh, you know, the Great Pat Summit, yeah. you know, is there with her honors. And the great Cindy Brogdon, who I said I played with, mm -hmm. you know, has been inducted into that Hall of Fame as well. Uh, so these are things that. Are, are priceless. I'm gonna probably have to go and go two days because I'm not gonna be able to go through it in one day. I know I'm not. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be reading everybody's caption on like, everybody's. Man. <laughs> right. That's special. That is special. You know, and to have Ravens jersey to hang in the Ring of Honor. Yeah. For one year is that's just priceless. That is. That is a player you've coached. Um, <laughs> that's tremendous. <laughs> So, Coach, I always like to end the show. I call it my triple TQs, the talk that talk questions. <laughs> I'm going to ask you three questions, and off the top of your head, you just give me your response. And, you know, it's, <laughs> well, it's not hard. No, it's not hard. I tell you, I keep it simple. I do not make it complicated. This is a conversation. I want my viewers to get all the information, all the goodies. So, okay. this is the first one. <laughs> what advice would you give to young girls who aspire to become college basketball players? First thing is dedicate themselves to getting better. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes as little young ladies in some of the earlier years, uh, they may not play the great competition. Gotcha. And we get this false sense that I'm great. Mm -hmm. Why should I have to do more? Mm -hmm. You know, I've had freshmen to come into my program and they were doing it up, you know, in AAU and eighth grade, uh -huh. going double digits and everything. Uh -huh. You know, you come to Westlake and oops. Right. <laughs> I'm not great. Nope. You have to dedicate yourself to continue to improve your game right. and be committed to doing that. And sometimes uh, some young ladies and some athletes don't continue to do that. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, then you can become that athlete that a recruiter might just want one day. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got to understand that there are a lot of kids out there that want a scholarship. Mm -hmm. It's not given just because of who you are or just because you have attended Westlake High. Right. But you have to be willing to put forth a lot more effort and give it that time. And I tell my kids all the time when they come back in the fall, I said, I don't have to ask you if you worked out over your game over the summer. Yes. I said, the proof is in the pudding. It sure is. I always, I always see it. And I stand on the sideline with my coach and say, mm, look what she's learned how to do. Look what so-and-so has learned how to do. It is obvious. Mm -hmm. You cannot hide that work ethic. You can't. you can't. When they give it, the coaches will see it. I will see it as a high school coach. And I promise you, the college coaches will see it too. Mm. That's great advice. Second question, explain the impact that the game of basketball has had on your life. And looking back, would you change anything that you've experienced along the way? Uh, first of all, the impact has been far greater than I ever expected, I do believe. Okay. Um, when I was younger, it was just a love for the game. Mm -hmm. And as I matured as a coach, I've started to see what this game has been able to do as far as my platform mm -hmm. to be able to take kids to places that they never would possibly ever go right. we to the Bahamas and we're the champions over there. Mm -hmm. We've been to Hawaii. They have actually, they were running a, a boys tournament for many, many years mm -hmm. and the 25th anniversary of the men's tournament. And it was the first year for the women. Mm. And we were a part of that first year. That's that awesome. was the first time our team was ranked nationally that year mm. in 2009. Okay. And to take those kids, take me to Hawaii. Okay. Right. I was in, take me. That was, that was on my bucket list to get to Hawaii, <laughs> you know, and 
and the parents were allowed to go. It was a, a phenomenal time. Mm -hmm. And to when I played ball in college, you know, when we went to Memphis, Tennessee, my mm -hmm. college coach made sure we went by to see where Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated mm -hmm. uh, to be able to see the world. That's an experience. You, know, uh, you can't buy it. Yeah. No, you, you can't take that away. And I just remember my college coach always making sure that we saw something mm -hmm. that we probably wouldn't have seen had we not gone with the basketball team. Because I don't know when I would have gotten to see where Martin Luther King was assassinated, but she thought right. it was important. Yeah. I've even seen the home of Elvis Presley, you know, Graceland. You know, we've been everywhere. I've been to the Grand Ole Opry and we're going to the coach. Why we got to go to there? We don't yeah. want to see that. Yeah. I'm so proud to say I've been to the Grand Ole Opry. Now, I mean, you know. That's amazing. Uh, That's amazing. You know, I've, I've been to a lot of places because of basketball. Mm -hmm. And I make it a point that when I take my team places that I show them the things that they may not get a chance to see. We went to Miami, played a tournament down there years ago and had kids that had never seen the ocean. Mm -hmm. And that that week it turned cold, like mm -hmm. 45 degrees. So, you know, we can't get in the water now because it's too cold. Right. And my head, my assistant coach, he said, well, coach, don't let them get so close to the water. You know, they might get a chill and we got a game to play. I said, uh-uh. They don't see it. They said, can we put our toes in the water? I said, we didn't come to the ocean for these babies not to touch this water. Mm -hmm. I said, so we let them put their feet in and we didn't stay. Mm -hmm. And we got back out. Just see what does that feel like mm -hmm. to see the ocean, to hear it, to pick up a shell and to put it up to your ear. Mm -hmm. And those are the kind of things that are priceless. Mm -hmm. When you take your kids on an adventure. Right. And I try to incorporate something extra. You know, when we went to the Geico <laughs> this year, it was nothing extra. Right. We, we had to be very careful. But uh <laughs> we did, we didn't do anything because we they actually did a COVID test on us at Geico. Believe it. I can believe it. Each day was a COVID <laughs> test. So it was nothing extra. No, uh, we didn't we didn't come here to play. Right. We didn't have room. <laughs> We we do an all walk through practice outside uh, in the in the uh, parking lot wow. of the hotel, and that's that's the norm for us. We don't have a gym. Parking lot is a good place. That, that was always the good place back in high school, even in college. Sometimes it didn't matter where you were. That's you right. Run through some plays, a walk through, a coach would figure it out, find a way. We actually went to Arizona once, and at that particular resort, uh -huh. they had a, uh, a helicopter landing pad. <laughs> You know, and it was wide open. And uh, my coach said, Coach, you know what we are? I said, what, what? He said, yes, it's the helicopter landing pad. I said, oh, my God. I said, so I made the coaches be on the lookout. Y'all watch out. But we're getting ready to get this work out here. <laughs> this helicopter landing pad. Right. <laughs> That's an interesting place right there. I, I hadn't heard about the helicopter landing pad. <laughs> hey, it was a, a blank slate. <laughs> All I saw was the concrete. <laughs> They saw, they saw the giant X on it, <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't have to move off of it. It was a great place it uh, worked to out. practice, but to give the kids an opportunity to, to do something that they would not ever have a chance to do. Mm -hmm. And I had a coach that told me, he said, coach, I had never been out of the state of Georgia wow. until I became your assistant. Wow. So, you know, it's not always just the kids, <laughs> it's the grown folks too. <laughs> That's awesome, Coach. That's awesome. And the last question I have for you, what is the legacy that you want to leave for future generations? Well, I think I would want to say is to make sure that when all this is said and done, have somebody to remember that you gave mm -hmm. all that you had and that what you gave was your best. Right. You know, whether I ever won a championship or not, people had asked me, because I told you we were very successful at Westlake with mm -hmm. 20 wins. And whether I'd ever won a championship or not, better believe that I want everybody to know that I have given my best to this program. Mm -hmm. And you want to always do your best in whatever it is, if it's in coaching, uh, teaching, being a doctor, lawyer, whatever, give your best. Mm -hmm. And I want people to remember that I gave my all mm -hmm. to Westlake High mm -hmm. in order to make us better each and every day. 
And if getting better brought about the championship, then so be it. Right. Because some of those years we did not have championships. So those were some great teams and those were some great young ladies. Mm -hmm. And you really know what you, what kind of impact you've had on someone's life when they come back and speak to my team in the locker room and you say, okay, she got it. She got it. <laughs> That's all that matters that you assisted somebody in becoming a better human being. Because mm. this part of being an athlete is going to come and go. Right. You know, playing, it's gone. Right. These days are over for me. Right. I remember when I had to hang those shoes up? It didn't bother me in the, in the immediate. It bothered me when that next fall came around mm. and I didn't have an opportunity to dress again. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I can remember thinking that day, because I was an assistant coach then, mm -hmm. the state. Will I ever love this game the same? Mm -hmm. Like I loved it as a player. Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. But in that moment, I was in tears, yeah. <laughs> wondering, will it be as fulfilling? And it, like I said, the wins have come, but it wasn't about that. I told you, I forget. Right now, we are 112 wins in a row in the state of Georgia. That's, a, that's an amazing accomplishment. I was going to shout that out. And I did not realize that we were about to be, we were 88. Mm -hmm. And in two more wins, we were going to win the state championship. And so I'm, I'm making a point to the kids, you know, because the practice was a little bit dry and not as dedicated as they needed to be. And I, and I remember looking up and I made the kids count the wins on the banners. Mm -hmm. Once again, I hadn't counted it myself. Wow. I said, mm, y'all, we, we got 89 straight wins. Uh, but then we got the 90. And I knew that in 10 wins, we would get that 100. But I didn't let them know it the next year. They didn't know when we hit it. We won that 100th win. And then I told them the next day. Mm -hmm. We weren't counting like that. And neither was I until I made, tried to make a point to the children. Count those wins. Da, 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 da. You can give more. And I'm like, mm, that's that's huge. And so right now, we are 112 wins without a loss. The AJC did a story, and the team in Taylor County, mm -hmm. that lady has 132, 136, somewhere in there. Right. And uh, But I told him, I said, she did it when the girls were playing three on three and the Rover. Right. We are the only one to do it in the five on five era. Wow. Okay. That's amazing, Coach. It makes a difference. That's amazing. Okay. So you are making history and you are leaving your mark in history. So again, congratulations. And thank you. we thank applaud you. and want to just say thank you for everything you do. At least I want to. I'm doing it for the whole South Side. Or and I appreciate you. And I know what kind of athlete you were. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> mm, greatness. <laughs> That's what I said. Those were fun times. Um, I always talk about that. My parents still do, too. Um, you know, Westlake, they didn't send me there. I wanted to go there, but they sent me to Riverwood. Right. You know, I, I love Riverwood. And I'm happy, you know, the decision exactly. was made for me, right? But yeah. at the same time, that was that experience. When we changed regions and I was knowing I was coming back to the South Side, I coming back home to play against my peers and friends and yeah. It was an amazing experience. Win or loss, the crowds, the feel, the competition, it made me better. And I think that was a blessing in disguise um, right. when they switched regions my junior season and I had that opportunity because it, it let me show my talent against the same amount or, or just as great talent as I had in that level of competition to get better and to give myself an opportunity to get a scholarship. So, right. you know, we yeah, gotta, you made me work hard to, pl to plan against yourself. I'm going to tell you. You're the only name that I mentioned. And the kids were like, you stop calling her name. Hey, we got to be better. <laughs> but uh, you made us better, too. So thank you. Oh, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Well, I'm so happy you could join and um, you were able to come on today. I'm glad we can make this happen. You looking beautiful as ever. I'm glad you got done up for the show. Uh, oh, had to, had to. <laughs> But again, uh, good luck with the future, future players. I'm going to have to come check you guys out next season. I haven't been to a game in a while, but I'm going to make an effort to do it. And again, congratulations. Thanks for joining. Well, thank me. you so much. I appreciate it. All right, Coach. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.
Well, that was another great episode of Talk That Talk, episode 26. I had the honor of having Coach Hilda Hankerson on the show, Westlake Girls Basketball Coach. She was amazing, gave us some jewels, some gems, and just some knowledge about her journey, experiences as being a player to a coach, and just really how she's been able to maintain such great success in working with a lot of young women or young girls in the high school arena in Atlanta and how she's turned Westlake basketball, girls basketball into a powerhouse. That athletic program at Westlake has always been great, but we have to give our flowers to people like Coach Hankerson. Coach Hank has been doing it and doing it well for a long time, and we want to see her continue to be successful and represent for our community. So congratulations to Westlake basketball, the girls basketball team, four state championships, national Geico champions this year for 2021. Congratulations, Coach Hank and the girls basketball team. Well, this is another one. It's been another great episode. I'm going to continue the trend and give my black business shout out for the week. And this week, the shout out goes to Nisha Butler. She is the founder of this nonprofit called Ballin Technology, where she is taking her shoes off, getting off the hardwood, where she was a great amateur and collegiate athlete, one of the greats out of New York City, and now turning that into coding. She has her hand in her place, teaching great curriculum to kids around New York and around the country. So please go check out and see what Nisha Butler is doing. You can go check her out on IG at Balling Technology. That's B-L-L-I-N technology. No G on it. So go to her page and see what she's doing. See what upcoming a coding event she has for your children. You know, you're looking for activities this summer. We just finished with school, the school year during COVID and during the pandemic. And now you need something for these kids to do. Well, this is the perfect idea and the perfect thing for your children to learn, grow, and just have fun. Nisha Butler is making coding fun for kids to learn experience and hopefully one day want to join the industry but again the black business shout out this week is going to nisha butler for ballin technology a great nonprofit that's really helping kids around the country and here in her community and we have to support and promote black women doing great great things in our communities and nisha butler's doing it so go check her out give her a shout that's the black business shout out this week but again, this was another great episode, episode 26. I had the pleasure of having Coach Hankerson on the show from Westlake High School. She gave a great interview, just had a great conversation, just catching up with one of my favorite coaches around Atlanta and in the state of Georgia, as a matter of fact. But please check out episode 26. Check out Westlake High School Girls next year if you could catch a game, support these girls because they've been tremendous over the last four years, winning four straight championships in the state of Georgia and the Geico National Champions this year. So please support them. Continue to support the podcast, Talk That Talk. We've had 25 other episodes that have been fantastic. Subscribe, join, follow me on Instagram, Talk That Talk Fallon, or you can follow my personal page, which is Future Stokey on IG. Again, this was another good one. See you next time.